So the glorious day has finally arrived, Christmas. This beautiful day we look forward to every year. We get another opportunity to reflect on this beautiful mystery, this wonderful mystery, and we deepen it more and more every year of our life. Looking at the Christmas crash, you know, we think of Christmas time, we, Christmas music and all the decorations and the commercialism and all that, which is so far secondary for the real purpose of Christmas. We know the real purpose is there in the manger, in the cave of Bethlehem, reflecting on that. And the message there is loud and clear. It really screams out at us the humility of God, the humility of God, the love of God to come down and be in our midst and his poverty, those really those three things that really stand out and help us to put them into practice in our own life. But we really get a glimpse of God himself and what his character is, you know, how, what God is like, that God is humble, that God is humble. Can you believe that? He, infinitely great, infinitely powerful, is humble too, you know. Uh, what's the song? Uh, God, oh Lord, it's hard to be humble uh, when you're perfect in every way. Kenny Rogers, uh, you know, God is perfect in every way, and so how can he be humble, you know? He can't be humble because of sins that he reflects on. He can't be humble because he's nothing like we are. He can't be humble in, in that sort of intellectual way like we have to be. So how can he be humble? By humbling himself. That's how he's humble. He's humble by condescending, by, uh, by effacing himself, by condescending, by humbling, humiliating, humiliating himself even. He humbles himself in, in becoming a man, and then he goes even lower than that. He comes into poverty. He comes into suffering. He comes into allowing others to abuse him. He humbles himself to the point of humiliation. All this because of his infinite love for us and, and because of his greatness of character. God's character is so great, so unbelievable, so beyond, beyond anything we can imagine that God would do this to himself. God would humble himself and humiliating hurt himself so much for us. Unbelievable, really. Nobody could even imagine that, that God could do that, and yet he does. And this is how great God is, and it should stir in our hearts wonder, wonder in just immense love for God. And that's what we're trying to, to, to enkindle in our heart, this love for God, looking at his humility and looking at his love for us, because he wouldn't humble himself just just for the sake of humility. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to humble and humiliate himself. He doesn't have to do that in justice. God is perfect. He didn't do anything wrong. He doesn't need to do that. But he does it out of love for, for us, his infinite love. And so we reflect on that love, which is really shown in deeds. You know, we think of humility, we have to be humble in our thoughts and, and our nothingness and our reflecting on our sins. All that's kind of intellectual, and we have to exercise that intellectual humility. But it's kind of hard to just think that way and reflect. It takes time, it takes, you know, meditation, which not many people want to do. But we can humble ourselves in deeds, and we can love in deeds. You know, we can be poor in deeds. And that's, that's a little easier for us as human beings to, to just do it. To just do it and then we can think it a little bit better. And uh, sometimes we don't even want to do, do, do things that we're supposed to do. And this is how we prove. We prove we are Christians. We prove we are love. We prove that we're really humble by doing things that we're supposed to do. Do as Jesus did. He did. He came among us. He put himself here. He dwelt among us in that deed, that ultimate deed, and he suffered in deed, really, in his flesh. He did everything in deeds, you know. He didn't just say these things. He didn't just have send the prophets to proclaim these things. He came and did them himself. And, and this is how we can know that we are growing or doing, you know, that we love God. We may not always feel like we love God or we're even, <clears throat> uh, 
you know, thinking that we do, you know, but if we do it in deeds, you know, we go to confession, we not feel sorry, but we go there and we plan to reform our life and we take the steps and we say and do th things, even if we don't feel like it, we're proving our contrition, we're proving our love through deeds, and this is the ultimate, uh, uh, the ultimate proof, the ultimate uh, actions we need to, to take in putting into practice our Christian, our Christian life, put in, and and showing God that we uh, are His servants and we are obedient, and that we uh, we truly love Him. Everything in deeds, everything in deeds, and in particular today, we we want to humble ourselves in deeds, you know, condescending ourselves to others, not uh, lording over and being. Uh, 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 arrogant towards others, putting other people down, but doing things to humble ourselves, serving, helping, uh, reaching out, you know, turning to those who are lowly, and doing things in, in deeds, and, and that's true humility. That is exactly what Jesus has done on this day. He has humbled himself in deeds, and we need to do that as well as think humbling, humbly about our, ourselves and reflecting on our nothingness and sins and, and to love and deeds in, in, in actual practice and doing, proving our love for God in, in our actions and charity to our, our neighbor, charity to God, spending time in prayer and meditation, uh, mortifying ourselves and uh, fighting sin, avoiding occasions, all these deeds proving our, our love for God as he proved his love and deeds for us. In poverty too, we can uh, do practice poverty in deeds, not just try to detach ourselves in mind and heart. You know, it's not always easy to do that, but we can do things in deeds. We can diminish our, f our physical possessions, uh, you know, give away, give away. That's the, one of the best ways to, to practice poverty, to give. It's more joy in giving than in receiving, our Lord said, to give. To, to simplify our life, um, to you know, get rid of things we don't need, or not, to, not to go out and buy and purchase all these things that are going to distract us and worry us and take our minds away from God and important things of life. Simplify our, so our lives and, and do this out of love for God so that we can love Him more and be more, more focused, more concentrated on Him and eternal, eternal things and be more generous to our neighbor be more giving, more giving, more giving. That's the love of poverty should sort of uh, be directed towards that, giving to, to our, our neighbor. So let us reflect on those things this beautiful Christmas day, the love of God, his humility, his detachment and poverty, and to put it into practice deep into our heart and in our lives and deeds.